YouTube. Jim here, Little Shop on the Prairie. I'm going to try something new. I've been needing, meaning to do this for a long time for my youngest daughter. Um, that's that uh, making the doors for her kitchen cabinet. And I kept, kept on procrastinating on this because I've never done it before. And I went on Flea Bay, bought one of these. Okay, it's a molder head, and uh, it didn't come with a manual or anything, but I had, you know, so I had to go online, and you know what, there's not much about this thing out there, so the place, the, the seller that I bought this from included uh, three sets of knives, um, and it was pretty rusted up a little, well, not bad, but it was rusty. So I went through with a uh, green scour pad and some WD-40 and cleaned them all up. So what I found is these knives that come with it, okay, one side has a like a bevel cut around the hole and the other side doesn't so you can't go wrong on installing them i like that because that bevel side goes towards this little ball bearing that's inside here um, with a with a uh, screw that cinches it down and centers it up so the knives go in uh, in a set location so you can't really go wrong. Uh, maybe they could twist a little bit. But when I look at looked at it, when I got all done, the bottom here of the knife fits at the bottom of the groove. So it really, it kind of is a self-aligning. But I don't know for sure. i got to do some more research. But I've got them where I think they're going to work well. So... I'm going to go ahead and um, I got this all in. It's all put together. Uh, you have to have a special arbor, okay, for the molding tool. Um, the shaper, let's see, now wait a minute. How does that work? The uh, There's two sets of arbors that you can get. One is for your dado blades and the other is for your uh, molder head. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I had both of them. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and, and set this on. Um, it's just a regular 5 8 inch hole. So I'm going to go ahead and put the arbor on here and uh, get this set up into the saw. And I'll be back. So we'll try molding. It sounds like it's going to solve my problem. Um, it just a little it seems a little scary to see blades flying around in that direction. But. That's okay. It'll be fine. And I believe what I have to do is on the blades here, you can go, you can mount it this way onto the arbor or this way onto the arbor, which would reverse the direction of the bevel of the blade, of the knives. And I believe I have to go with the bevel in the back. And this is the cutting edge, the flat edge is the cutting edge. So, I'm going to try it that way and we'll see what happens. Thanks for watching. Hey, a quick update. I may have said that wrong on the uh, arbors. Um, here's one of the arbors that I've got. That, uh, And when I look down here, it's saying the 505-506 molder slash dado arbor. And then the 555 117 is the shaper arbor and I do know the shaper arbor has multiple bushings and this one has the multiple bushings so my dado arbor that I use is the right one to use for the molder head I'm glad I kept I'm glad I kept this and you know now that I'm thinking about it I got to go get my book. It's right up there. The power tool, woodworking for everyone.
excellent book. Hey YouTube. Alright, we're going to attempt to do a little test run on the molder. Got a little scrap piece of wood here. Now I'll show you what I'm going to do. Oh, let me get this uh, door. And as usual. So, this is the uh, kitchen cabinet door that the molding here. Let's see. You can tell this is the part. Uh, this is the part I need to try to duplicate this little cove. And I don't know if it's going to show on the camera, but it's a little bit. It's not really a. Uh, full circle. It's kind of deep on one end and shallow on the other. Um, so, I want to duplicate that. <clears throat> so I'm going to need to use the router to do the, uh, there's a bead on either side, so I need to use the router to make the bead and the molder to make that cove. So, uh, if I can do this right, let's see. Is this going to show what my setup is sort of huh okay so i've got the table tilted i'm not sure of what the uh angle is but this is unique so it's, it's really not necessary and the way i did this let me see if i can do it like this and maybe it'll be easier to see what I did was I took the molder head and took my piece of wood kind of eyeballed right here with the molder uh, knife up against a piece of wood to get what I wanted and what I found is that I need to have because this thing's so wide um, how made a comment on the last one that, yeah, this is way too wide for what I need, uh, being a dado blade. And, you know, remember I cut this. Um, and I can see where a short piece of wood would be a problem. So a project I got coming up, I think, is going to be to do something with my zero clearance uh, pieces. I was thinking about... Oh, this is my router zero clearance and it's possible to maybe take take this part of it and come up with a slot that would fit that so that's coming up we may modify this type to work for either the router or the uh molder if I find that if I find I'm going to do more molding so anyway I'll show you what I've done or how this is done I preset everything up I have the adjustable stop on the bottom I've got those two but I need to find uh, my uh, use this push stick um, I like it because it straddles the fence but it also puts pressure on the front on the front of the piece of wood to keep it from popping up. So let's give this a shot and we'll see how this works. It's really cold out here. So here we go. I need one more piece. kind of slow because it's a little bit scary not knowing for sure what I've got 
But here's what happened. Is that going to show up? I've got about the right cove, but it's not quite it's not quite angled like I want. So um, I may the depth looks right, but the the bottom of the cove I want it more on this side here and more of a ramp on that side. It's close. It's the right depth. So, adjusting the fence uh, may be the answer. But that's my setup. And you can hear how it, it sounds scary. <laughs> it really is kind of scary. But uh, I think it's going to, I think that's going to be the answer. Tilting the table like that um, just gives me just that little piece of the knife. So I'm going to mess around some more and I'll come back when I get this exactly the way I want it. Thanks for watching. All right, you guys. Well, I think what it ended up, not, I didn't move my fence. It was the angle of the table that I had to adjust. So we're going to make one more cut here on our test piece. Try to show a little bit better on this view. Hopefully this will be more interesting to see. But I think this final cut is going to be exactly what I was hoping for. I'm sorry about the heater in the background, but it's chilly. So hopefully that view, you got to see more of how the setup worked. Ah. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> I didn't put my piece of wood in good, so I got a second cut. Okay, let's go on this side here, try it again. But it looks like it worked. Exactly what I want. <laughs> Yay! Okay, so let me see if I can show the profile so that you can see better. See how the, the bottom of the cove now is offset and then that little flat there. That is exactly what I was hoping for. So the molder is going to do what I want. Now I've got to cut a bead on this side and a bead on this side with the router. And I've got a special bit for doing that. So I'll show you that if you'd like. But I need to measure now uh, the width of this. Make sure it matches uh, on the table. But that gave me the profile, man. It, it worked. Okay, so I can tell you. The molder is a very versatile piece. It's a little scary, but I think if you have the right zero clearance uh, insert in there, which we'll get to, um, it won't be quite so scary. It'll be mostly covered up, no big gaps. I think that's what scares me the most, is that it looks like the wood could fall down inside there uh, and go flying around. Um, the knives I'm not so worried about anymore. They're they're solid in there. They ain't coming out. Uh, and of course the motor head's not coming out. So 
That's the only scary part now is the opening. So I would suggest if you can, I think Shopsmith sells a molder head insert made strictly for the molder. And it's not as wide as the data. Um, so that's an option. But I'm going to go on my zero clearance, my homemade zero clearance uh, because so far I'm really enjoying using all of those I made so far better. Okay, so yes, yes, that's an answer.